Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are waiting for your questions. Let me just remark at the beginning that the National Electoral Commission and the National Electoral Office are ready to the referendum that will take place uh, the day after tomorrow. The election silence starts at midnight tonight. The commissions are ready for their work. The voting will start at 6 a.m. and will be lasting until 10 p.m. This is a sample ballot for the referendum containing two questions. And at each question, there are two boxes. The voter shall cross the selected box. The electoral code clearly states that these are two crossing lines. It must be remembered that the cross must be put inside of the box. Just one box must be crossed. There are two boxes next to each question. Madam Minister would like to add something. No, we are actually waiting for your questions. There are three questions. Three questions. Two or three. No, there are three questions on the ballot. On each ballot, there are three questions. I will not quote the content. I'm sure you know it. It has been published a long time ago. Under each question, there are two boxes. On the left-hand side, the word yes. On the right-hand side, no. And under each of the three questions, there are boxes marked yes and no, and the voter should cross one box only. The cross is defined as two lines crossing within the box. If the cross is put outside the box, the vote, the vote is invalid. Invalid vote is also one where two boxes are crossed or neither of them is crossed. Any words uh, or remarks dotted down on the ballot do not matter. Let me remind you one more thing. It may happen that uh, the vote will be partially invalid. For instance, uh, the voter will forget to put a cross next to one of the questions or will do it on purpose or will put two crosses, uh, but the remaining questions will be crossed correctly i.e. just one of the boxes will be chosen. In such a case, each question is uh, treated separately. The Commission looks at uh, each question separately, whether it has been crossed correctly or not, so whether the vote concerning single a single question is valid. It means more work for us, but uh, we want to clear it and we want to have a clear answer. It needs to be remembered simply that the cross should be put next to each question or not. It's actually up to the voter whether he or she wants to reply to each question. If, as I said, the question does not have any crosses or there are two crosses next to a question, then this particular vote is invalid. Your Honor, could you show us uh, the ballot so that we can film it? Yes, so we even have a braille overlay on it to show you what it will look like uh, in the version for uh, persons uh, with impaired uh, seeing or persons who, are, persons who are blind. Three questions two boxes under each question. The print is large, so I'm sure there will not be any problem with uh, reading it and finding the boxes if the voter shall have any questions. Your Honor, Madam Minister, what is the silence, uh, election silence about? Is it about uh, a ban on talking about politics, about the referendum? Well, it's hard to ban people to talk about politics. The National Electoral Committee, before each election, presents uh, its position and uh, 
urges or asks the people to follow the rules. We remind people about the penal rules that uh, forbid canvassing in the silence, election silence period. If the silence is disrupted uh, through some campaign activities, for instance, presenting specific um, types of voting or canvassing for um, any institutions uh, that are included, that are mentioned in the questions. This can be treated as a violation of, of election silence. Nevertheless, we always emphasize that we are not the body to assess it. We don't have the right instruments and we don't have, don't have the mandate to do so. There are other bodies uh, and courts to do it. Your Honor, Katarzyna Radzinska, Polish Press Agency, we know that we will have to wait until all the protocols from all the commissions so reach you. Is it possible that during the night, right after the referendum, you will be able to provide us with some information about the turnout? No, we will not give you the turnout information. The Act on National uh, Referendum clearly states that the turnout is calculated based on valid ballots taken out from the ballot boxes. So only once uh, these ballot, uh, ballots are taken out and assess whether they are valid will we be able to give you the turnout information. Turnout is not based on the total number of ballots handed out to the voters, but on the uh, number of ballots in the ballot boxes. So the electronic data will not give you any information prior to that? Well, we will most likely have this information, but it will not be uh, very precise. It will be just a, an estimate for us. We will have to wait until we get uh, the document stating how many ballots were taken out from the ballot boxes and how many votes were valid. Only then will we be able to give you a binding information. So only once you have uh, official results. Yes, we hope that uh, these results will be there on the next day. We hope that it will not come too late. So just to be more specific, invalid votes lower the turnout. Turnout. I, 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 Let's not mix two things, uh, ballots and votes, ballots, ballot papers. Invalid ballot papers are these that have, for instance, uh, other print that uh, the, the one I showed to you or ones without a stamp. We base turnout on the number of valid ballot papers. Valid votes are a different thing. You can go and vote, and your vote can be invalid. For instance, if you put two crosses or if you put no crosses at all. This is an invalid vote, but the voter participates in the referendum and is included in the turnout calculation. Materially speaking, this person takes part in the referendum. My second question is, you mentioned that the vote is invalid if you, for instance, put two crosses next to one question or no crosses at all. What if you put two crosses and you don't reply to another question? That's my first question. Does that invalidate your whole, your whole vote? And Another question, will it be a forbidden activity if a politician is uh, in front of a polling station canvassing uh, for the parliamentary elections? Is that a violation of election silence? And thirdly, will you count the invalid votes during that referendum? Yes, as for your first question, as I said, it may happen that uh, the ballot is partially invalid. For instance, next to question number one, we have two crosses. Then this part of uh, the referendum ballot is uh, invalid. Then, um, for instance, the voter puts one cross next to question number two and two crosses or no crosses at all next to question number three. This invalid this part of uh, the vote. So in our example, only question number two would be valid. 
So this is done partially, isn't it? Yes, correct. And that's how each ballot paper will be assessed. Could you refer to my second question? The politician uh, encouraging people to uh, vote in a certain way in the parliamentary elections. Well, if there are no elements impacting or directly connected with the referendum, well, do not treat it as a binding opinion. I'm not entitled to issue binding opinions, but I can just say that there is a very thin red line between these two campaigns, between the referendum campaign and the parliamentary elections campaign, they overlap to a certain extent. And if there are such cases, for instance, a politician wishing to run in the parliamentary elections uh, undertakes some campaign activities during the referendum silence, theoretically, it could be assumed that this is a breach of the uh, election silence. Nevertheless, we issued uh, a plea not so long ago asking all the politicians and all the parties to respect the election silence. Uh, we are aware, however, that uh, it's just our request, a form of suggestion. It's not necessarily binding. We would like the referendum silence to encompass election silence uh, in a way. We think that uh, those couple of hours uh, will not matter that much in terms of the election campaign. But let me just reiterate, it's only our request that we presented uh, in our letter to the parties several days ago. And my last question, will you count the invalid, empty votes, empty ballot papers? We will count everything. We have to count invalid votes as well. Will there be separate information about it, separate about empty and invalid? Yes, that's uh, the case always. Martin Trapsky, TVP Info. When will we get the results in the optimistic and pessimistic scenario? Optimistically speaking, we assume that uh, we will be able to present the results of the referendum within a similar time frame, uh, like during the second run of the presidential elections, so early afternoon. But we cannot foresee everything. It may happen that uh, there will be some troubles. For instance, uh, foreign commissions and commissions based abroad which uh, may present the results to us a bit later. Let's hope, however, that it will not be later than in the mentioned case of the second run of presidential elections. Is there a final deadline for you? The most pessimistic version? Well, it's hard to speculate uh, what the latest date could be. I'm certain that nothing will happen to postpone the results uh, announcement until Tuesday, so I'm just being cautious. I hope, however, that this will, this will not be the case. Edyta Boźniak, Polish a, uh, Radio. Let me ask you about the uh, work of the National Electoral Commissions and uh, your press conferences. I'm sure that there will be the 6 a.m. conference. Do you plan to have any conferences uh, during the day, for instance, when it comes to violations of uh, uh, the uh, referendum procedure? Well, as for our communiques, on Sunday, right after the polling stations are opened, if you wish so, we will present the information to you information about a violation of the referendum silence you mentioned. Well, I think that we might organize ad hoc briefings to at maximum um, on Sunday, early morning and in the afternoon. We will be using police materials during them. We hope that there will not be many cases of uh, violations of the referendum law, but we will keep you up to date with that. Katarzyna Zyńska, Polish Press Agency. After completion of uh, the voting, will you present partial results, for instance, once you get 30% of the protocols? No, that will not be the case. We'll only 
present the final result on Monday, the total aggregate result without any partial results. Any questions to Madam Minister? No, we have heard everything. The press materials will be handed over to you shortly with a summary of uh, this meeting and further information that you might consider useful. Thank you very much.